year is 10,000 BC, the end of the last ice age, and mankind is on the brink of extinction. Amidst a fierce and savage world, our ancestors were left with two choices, adapt or die. This is the setting of Far Cry Primal, Ubisoft's latest game in the popular Far Cry series. In it, players will experience the Stone Age, a period which would change the course of human history and lay the foundation for our lives today. We wanted to build a pure Far Cry, the original Far Cry. Almost something that was stripped of everything that was Far Cry and almost take it right down to its chassis. Primal is you at the dawn of man in a savage frontier, basically trying to figure out whether you can survive. I think at the heart why it clicked is because it's a very uh, powerful idea, very simple, and as soon as you start to, uh, to follow the thread of this idea, everything matches together. This is something we do uh, at Ubisoft. We try to, to be as, uh, you know, as realistic as possible. We, we create worlds, and for us, this comes first. So it's about making sure that we have a consistent universe that works within itself. Uh, so we do a lot of research. My job was to try to provide the team with, you know, experts. So we hired historians, linguists, uh, anthropologists to make sure that uh, we, we got as much data as possible on this setting so that we had it just right. With the help of anthropologists from Montreal's University of McGill, the development team decided to set Far Cry Primal during the Mesolithic period of the Stone Age in what we know today as Eastern Europe's Carpathian mountain chain. As the Ice Age ended, this region became a verdant climate where life flourished, where tribes from Northern Europe, Western Europe, and Mesopotamia intersected as they migrated across the continent in search of resources. This made for an ideal setting for a Stone Age game. By taking the, the prehistoric age and especially the uh, Mesolithic era, uh, we are right into the, uh, the, the first frontier, the first time people were actually going to fight for land. Far Cry Primal takes place in a giant valley called Uros, and in it, players will encounter many different human tribes. Each of these tribes depicts an important branch of prehistoric humanity, and each carries their own culture and set of beliefs. The Winja tribe is a uh, tribe of, uh, originally a tribe of uh, hunter-gatherer. They were uh, traveling uh, throughout Europe, following the food all year long. But when they found Oros, uh, which was uh, full of life, they started to, uh, to settle down. The Izila are the most advanced tribe. They have almost like a thousand years of advance. They come from Mesopotamia. They already master irrigation and agriculture, and they are so advanced that they consider themselves above the other tribes. And uh, they started to uh, capture uh, Winja and Udam to uh, do their labor. So in a sense, they're the first slavers. During their research, a third possibility emerged that fascinated Far Cry Primal's development team. Throughout history, there have been known anomalies in human development, groups that have evolved in total isolation for hundreds or even thousands of years. The Udam tribe is an exploration of this concept. The Udam tribe, in order to survive, started to um, resort to inbreeding. So now they are like a dying breed. They don't know what's going on to, uh, with themselves, and they are looking for a cure, something that would save them. And uh, they scavenge Oros to eat people that they think might be uh, stronger than them and would provide them the cure. Far Cry games are about uh, exotic location, uh, places with weird characters, but also about authenticity. And the language is really essential. Uh, we wanted the, the characters to speak something that could have been spoken at the time, so we turned uh, to uh, experts that we found uh, to help us recreate a language that has been dead for uh, 12,000 years. So Proto-Indo-European was a language that was spoken thousands of years ago. It's the source of many languages that are spoken today, uh, languages like English and Spanish and, and Russian, but also the source of ancient languages like Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. 
There are a number of words that we can reconstruct or we know to have existed within Proto-Indo-European. So for example, the word for water was water. The word for brother was brachter. Now we figure this out by looking at what the languages that were actually written down, the languages that are spoken today, what do they say? So if you look at the word for brother, in English we say brother. In Latin they said frater. In Greek, there's a word that means a member of a secret society called prater. And in Sanskrit, they have pratar. And you can take all of these things back to something like prater. Sometimes we ran into problems where there weren't words that we can reconstruct for Proto-Indo-European. We know of about 20 different roots for the verb to shine, but we have no idea how they said yes. To figure this out, we had to think, well, how would you make up a yes, right? So what we thought was to have some sort of expression like, it is correct. In Proto-Indo-European, that would be something like, Each of the three tribes in Far Cry Primal speak their own adapted form of the Proto-Indo-European language, which reflects their beliefs, societal structure, and level of awareness of the world around them. For Wenjo, we wanted a language that Proto-Indo-European could have come from. So we looked at certain very ancient features of Proto-Indo-European, and we assumed them to be the baseline for not only the Wenjo tribe, but also the Udam. The creative team views the Azila as a more advanced tribe, so we thought it would be a good idea to give them a more advanced stage of the language. Well, we know that there were certain sounds within Proto-Indo-European that are very difficult for English and French speakers to pronounce. We also knew that we needed a language that was easily learnable, right? So when an actor is performing in Winja or performing in Azila, they're not just memorizing lines and just going with it. They're learning the meaning of every word, they're learning what the grammar of that sentence is, and they have to perform it as such. Getting the game's actors into character was a huge challenge, as our ancestors had none of the mannerisms that are a part of our modern body language. To tackle this challenge, movement coaches were consulted to deconstruct how early man moved and reacted. You know, the movement coaches, we would start with a, a warm-up and rehearsal before the shoot. And that consisted of breathing. It consisted of um, walking, figuring out where your center was so you can drop your center. Modern man walks more upright. So we had to learn how to drop our center of gravity. We had to learn how to not do things that we normally do, like point at people and, you know, just gestures you don't even think about. I convinced uh, Footy, the director, I was like, please, 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 can I do an immersion language class with the actors? Because I wanted them to really feel like they were speaking this, that they were living this experience. The first day I came in and the actors didn't really know what they were going to do. They thought we were going to do some grammar or something like that. And I did a full immersion lesson. For me as the actor, it was a challenge because it was something that I'd never done before. I'd never acted in another language, and especially a language that is not known. And as a performer, you want to come in and just be able to, you know, slay it and do your best work automatically. Just come in and go, bam, it's done, you know. It, I couldn't do that with this. We had to learn the language. We had to learn how to move differently. I had them talking to each other, asking each other questions in Ouija. I had them introduce themselves as their character. And so they got to a point after our lessons where they would start yelling out things in Ouija. And it's been really amazing to see how the actors live and breathe these lines. They live and breathe this language. What's primal? How do we get back to our roots? The answers are surprising, complex, and fascinating to explore. It has taken the combined work of directors, animators, programmers, and actors 
to step into the mindset of Stone Age humans, to think like them, and gather insights that will ultimately bring this ancient world to life. This is really something that's fascinating when you, you explore the life of uh, men uh, 12,000 years ago, is that they were very close from what we are. They had uh, beliefs, they started to have, uh, uh, they, they took care of their dead, uh, they, they wanted to uh, teach uh, the future generation what they had seen and what they had experimented. So they, they were already really very close from what we were. Um, I think as people, we do tend to live in behind us or in front of us, and we miss what's happening right here. But in Primal Man, he had to be aware of what was happening right there because everything was dangerous. You can, you can see how simple life was back then, how fragile it was at the same time. People lived 30 years max. It was, it was like, it was hard. It was really hard. So again, this, you know, it's, I guess you, this game will make you feel more connected to nature and to what being a human is.